Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to link Jira into Confluence. This basically means that within a Confluence page, I'm going to show you how to show Jira data inside of Confluence. This is a really, really neat feature, and if you're not leveraging this functionality, I guarantee you that you are missing out on some super, super cool features and functionalities that just make communication up and down your streams so much more effective. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It helps out the channel tremendously. Also, drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Confluence. All right, so over on the Confluence side, you basically just want to create a page. And it doesn't matter where you do this, this functionality, what I'm going to demonstrate here today, is going to work pretty much anywhere and any part of any page within the world of Confluence. So just make sure you put it somewhere that makes logical sense to you and your team. But I'm just going to kind of throw things on a page to show you how to do it. But you're going to want to put some thought into where exactly do you actually put this information. All right. So you're just going to give it a title. So this is going to be a Jira demonstration. And once you give it a title, you'll come down here to the body. Now, this is where the fun begins. You may have noticed that you have this little plus sign on top of all your pages. It's in the navigation of your edit page. We're going to click on that. And then if you go to view more, I'm actually going to show you all the things that you can do now, but then go show you like specific examples. So you're going to want to click on external content, and then you're going to be able to see all the different things that you can do. And so we're going to just show you a couple of them, not all of them, but I'm going to give you like the big ones that I typically use so that you can see what is or isn't available for you. So the biggest thing that I typically do in here is I just actually type in Jira because Jira here is going to allow me to embed Jira issues. And so I'm going to click on this one first, and then I'm going to show you a couple of different examples of doing this. So when you click on just the Jira, when it's just slash Jira by itself, you can actually just put in a ticket number all by itself. And so if you put like FJC-20 and click the little search, it's going to go and look up that FJC-20. And I can control the display options. I can just control what kind of data comes in. But since this is a single issue, I just want to bring in that one issue. And what this looks like is it's literally just the issue number, the title of it, and then the status of it. And so if you had like a table, if I had a table of like, I don't know, prioritized stories, and then the Jira link, and then like internal status, I can call in Jira. And then I'm going to put in my FJC-20 here, FJC-20, click that search, click insert. You do need to click search and then insert, otherwise insert won't enable. And now it's in there. And now I can just call it whatever I wanted, something here. And then in, over here, we can actually leverage a different macro. There's a status one that you can take advantage of. And then you can put that, like this one's shipped. And so this, this is great for when you don't want to necessarily mess with the workflows in Jira because those workflows are for software development. But from a stakeholder, from a project management perspective, sometimes you just want to manage things and add a little bit more information, a little bit more metadata into what's happening with this particular story. And so now you can put things in the table and kind of organize your data and tell and control the narrative a little bit better add a little bit more pizzazz to the story that you're sharing with your executives. So that's one way of doing it. That's basically though, to just insert one item. I do have the option to bring in an entire table and that works best if you have a filter. So I'm actually going to go into Jira and I'm going to go grab a filter name because it's, this just works a little bit easier. And so I'm just going to open up like my, I don't know, filter for Turkey board. And so what happens here is if you actually grab this text, because this is just easier because you it's so easy to fat finger this. So I just go and grab it. You see the 28 issues here. It brings pretty much everything that's in that board. I'm going to come back over here to Jira. I'm going to type in that same slash Jira. And then this time, though, instead of just putting the ticket name, I'm going to follow the text that is recommending right here where you see filter equals my Jira. 
So if I type in filter equals quotes, my the filter that I just went and copied, okay, this is very key. You want to go and grab the filter first. You do have a chicken and egg situation here. And so, and then if you close the quotes, and then I click search, then it's going to go and grab all those 28 items. Now here, this is where display options is really, really valuable because instead of just bringing in random information, you can actually be very prescriptive and you can tell it how many issues to bring. So if I set, if I bring it to zero, if I clear it out, it'll bring everything in. And then let's just say that I want to see the parent. I want to see just different fields, right? Whatever, whatever fields that you have, any custom fields that you've created will work here too. Let's just say that I just want to bring in a couple more things and I can click insert or conversely, you can delete fields, right? And so now when you do the insert, it's going to bring in the data from Jira, which is basically those 28 items we were looking at earlier. And it's going to show you the whatever fields that you dictated or, or called out so that it, again, it'll just show them to you. So this is a really cool feature here that basically allows you to bring in a bunch of Jira data so you can filter through it. Once you do publish it, so once you hit publish here, this does become like a, an Excel type of file where you can filter, at least sort. <laughs> I mean, it's not that powerful, but you can at least sort by like status, by priority. And so if you're driving Jira and Confluence together to drive decisions, you can essentially get some pretty powerful insights here without having to have like two open windows of going in between Jira and Confluence. The, the reason you would want to do this here is because it, it allows you to basically create this like maybe you're doing like a release page where you're planning a release, you got a roadmap. I'll show you how to embed the roadmap in a second. And then you just want to bring in all the relevant issues. You just won't have a dedicated page where you are controlling a very specific narrative and you just want that data to come in here. And so rather than finding needles and haystacks in the world of Jira, you can bring in those filters into this view, add information before, add information after, or embed single line items in a table where you can essentially tell, again, your stakeholders what's going on and, and, and again, whatever you're trying to describe, right? So you have full creative freedom to do that. So the other example that I'll bring you, I'm going to go back into edit, right? We'll type in Jura again. And so this time I'm going to bring in uh, an advanced roadmap. So if you're on the premium version of Jura, you can go and bring your advanced roadmap. You do need to go to that advanced roadmap, go to whatever roadmap you have, and then there's a share as button up here. If you go to Confluence, this will generate the link. You can click copy on that. And then back in Confluence, you can paste it in. And then you can preview it if you want to. Or you can just hit insert. And that'll bring in the advanced roadmap. So those are three cool things that you can do. But it doesn't end there. All right. So the last thing that I'm going to show you is basically how to take items from your dashboards. So if you know over here in Jira, you can actually set up dashboards and... I'm just going to show you a quick dashboard. This does have custom charts for Jira, which by the way, is a separate plugin that you can buy for Jira and for Confluence. You do need to buy them twice, but you can basically use the same charts in both Jira and Confluence. But we're just going to look at the vanilla, just the regular out of the box dashboards that you have available to you. So if you, if you look at your just dashboard over here, all these things that are on the right hand side that you can bring in are available in Confluence. So if I switch back over to Confluence, I'm just going to click on that little plus sign, show you from the beginning when I clicked on that external content. We're just going to pick something. I'm going to do this workload pie chart. I'm going to click insert. And what this one's going to do is going to load up things. And it's just going to ask you like, hey, what filter do you want me to look off of? I'm just going to bring in any filter. So let me just go grab another filter again because I forgot it. I'll do my best filter here. And this is probably not going to return anything because I don't know that I have actual like time logged against it. So probably not the best example, but I can essentially bring in that filter, select what kind of thing I want to show. I'll do a signee. We'll pick the field that we want to report on, click save, and that's going to go and insert this metric here. Again, it might not, my example might not load anything, but when I hit publish, you will see that it may or may not have some data simply because I might not have time logged against it. But if I went into one of these issues here, and actually log some time against it. So if I spent some time spent and I got 2H here, hit save, I should be able to come back over here, hit refresh, and this gadget should hopefully, fingers crossed, show me something. All right, so as you can see, once I actually put data in Jura, the 
the plugin will essentially show it. And if I were to put the same plugin or the same gadget inside of dashboards, then it would show it as well. So that's basically how you can bring this. Now, there's a couple of other different things that you can do, but I don't want this video to get long. So I recommend you go and play with those things. But the items that I just showed you, bringing in the roadmap, bringing in a single issue, bringing in a table of issues, and then bringing in gadgets, those are the four most common things that you can do. But as you saw from the beginning, there's quite a few things that you can embed in here. And so I recommend go play around with them, see what you like, see what you don't like. Let me know in the comment section either way. And hopefully this helps you control that narrative ever so slightly and be able to tell a better story to your stakeholders. If you got value and you made it this far, make sure you're subscribed. It tremendously helps out the channel. Make sure you drop a like. Now that also really does help out with the channel. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.